one of the very basic concepts in linear algebra is a concept of a point or a vector. So let, let me explain it to you with, with, uh, with simple coordinate geometry that you might have learnt in your 10th grade or even uh, in your 11th or 12th grades. So let's assume I have a coordinate system like this. Let's assume this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. Right? Uh, just, just for generality, uh, what I'll say is instead of saying x-axis and y-axis, I'll call this x1 axis and I'll call this x2 axis from going forward, uh, from now on. Right? Because um, the problem is if I, have, if I have five axes, what will I name them? X, Y, Z, W, K. So I would rather say X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Right? So let's assume these are my two axes. And if I have a point here, right? geometrically speaking, this is a 2D surface. Uh, this, is a, this is a 2D coordinate system. Let's assume I have a point P here. How do I represent this point? I represent this point with two values. The first value corresponding to how far away is this point so I basically draw these two points so this point is let's say two units away from my origin this is my origin origin is basically 0 comma 0 where your x axis x1 axis value is 0 and x2 axis value is 0 so here I would say this point has my x coordinate as 2 and my y coordinate could be 3 right so this is how I represent a point I represent a point basically using a vector. So I can write my P to be a, a two-dimensional vector, right? This is a two-dimensional vector, right? So I write my P to be a two-dimensional vector uh, with components two and three. Just note the terminology that I'm using. This is called the component of a vector. This is called the X1 component. And this is called the X2 component of your vector. Now, what if I want to represent a point in three-dimensional space? For example, I have 3D space like this, right? I have x1 axis, I have x2 axis, and I have x3 axis. Suppose there is a point here, right? This point, Q, now can be represented using a vector of size 3. Let's assume it is 2 units away from x1, 3 units away from x2, and uh, let's say 5 units away. Then I can represent my Q with a vector of size 3. Right, So a three-dimensional point can be represented with a vector of size 3 with each component corresponding to how far away is it origin on that component. Right? Now the immediate question that I get is, how do I, this, this is a two-dimensional point and this is a three-dimensional point. Okay, it's a three-dimensional point. What about an n-dimensional point? What if I... What, how do I represent an n-dimensional point? Uh, uh, because I promised you that linear algebra is all about taking our learnings from 2D and 3D and extending it to n-dimensional spaces, right? So given any point, suppose if I have a point x, I can represent it in n dimensions with, with n components, right? I could have 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, so on and so forth. If I have n values, if I have n values here, it will represent a, an n-dimensional point in an n-dimensional space. So this is a two-dimensional space. This is a 2D space, right? This is a 3D space. Of course, uh, all three of them are perpendicular. Of course, we can't visualize a 4D space or a 5D space, but mathematically, I can write a point in n-dimensional space by using n components here, right? So this, this, is, this, is very simple, this is a very simple idea of what a point is. Now the next immediate question here is, what is the distance? What is the distance of a point from origin, right? So what is the distance of a point? Distance of a point from origin. We learned all these simple ideas in coordinate geometry probably in your high school, right? So let's take two D, right? We'll, we'll always learn a concept in two D and three D and extend it to higher dimensional space. Let's assume I have two dimensions, x1, x2. Imagine if I have a point here, right, with components A and B. What does that mean? That means that this length is A and this length is B, right? Now, what is it? What is the distance? So, and this is the origin, right? This is my origin. So, what is this length? This is nothing but the length of, or the distance. This, is, this distance D is nothing but 
distance between origin right and point p right this this distance and what what will that distance be if you just simply apply pythagoras theorem this length is b right this length is a so what is d d is nothing but a square plus b square under root simple pythagoras theorem right this this comes by just applying your simple pythagoras theorem okay this this is in 2d what about 3d in 3d i can have the same argument suppose if i have x1 x2 and x3 and if i have a point here right if i have a point p which has three components a b c right again by simply using pythagoras theorem i can prove that the distance of this point from origin let's call this d the distance of this point here in this case is nothing but okay let's call this p dash and d dash just for simplicity your d dash is nothing but a square plus b square plus c square again this you can prove very simply uh, very easily using using pythagoras theorem multiple times right now my immediate question is this is this is what it is in 2d right this is what it is in 3d what about nd if i have an n dimensional point right what is the distance of that point from origin the distance is nothing but so let's assume i have an n dimensional point with a1 as the distance from uh, distance from uh, as a as a first component so i'll take a1 square a2 square so on so forth a n square if my point if my point p is a1 a2 a3 so on so forth a n right if my point is if my point p is has components a1 a2 a3 a n then the distance of this point from origin is nothing but a1 square plus a2 square so on and so forth a n square under root so what we have learned in 2d and 3d we can easily extend it to n dimensional space right as as i promised you this is what linear algebra provides you as a basic tool now next important concept that we'll see is distance between two points right distance between two points so let's say again let's let's learn it in 2d first then we'll extend it to 3d and then to n dimensional spaces right so let's assume let's assume i have two axes x1 and x2 and i have two points p and q right let's assume p has a1 and a2 and q has b1 and b2 as the as the respective components now i want to find the distance between these two points right i want to find this d and i can find that d if you remember your basic coordinate geometry this d is nothing but a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square under root again this you can easily prove using using uh, uh, using pythagoras theorem let me show you how right so what is this distance this distance is nothing but this distance plus this distance square right if this is perpendicular and what is this distance this distance is nothing but on x axis you have b1 as this point you have a1 this distance is nothing but b1 minus a1 sorry i should have yeah it's it basically same b1 minus a1 square or a1 minus b1 square is just one and the same now this is nothing but um, a2 minus b2 this this height right now your distance between these two points is nothing but a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square right the si similar thing in 3d if you have two points p which is a1 a2 a3 and you have point q which is a b1 b2 and b3 the distance between p and q right the distance between p and q if it is d i can write it simply as square root of a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square plus a3 minus b3 square just under root of all of that right this again you can prove using basic pythagoras theorem by applying it multiple times similarly in nd space if you have two points p and q such that p, p, point p is a1 a2 so on so forth a n and point q is b1 b2 so on b n we can write the distance between p and q the distance between p and q can be written as square root of ai minus bi square right 
and I'll summate this from i equals to 1 to n. I've just written it in more concise form. Basically, I'm taking each a1 minus b1, squaring it, plus a2 minus b2 square, and I'm instead of writing it in, in this expanded form, I've just written it with a summation notation, right? So this is nothing but square root of this. So again, distance between two points, same idea that we learned in 2D and 3D, we're extending it to ND. Throughout linear algebra, when, when we learn our basics of linear algebra, this is what we'll do. We will learn a concept in 2D and 3D and extend it to higher dimension. Let's learn some simple terminology and notation here. So we have two concepts. One is called a row vector. The other is called a column vector. A column vector. Suppose if I write my vector as a row, where I have elements, let's say I have a vector A and I write it as A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth. And let's assume it is, a, it is a vector which has n components, right? Then we write, when we write it like this, it basically has one row and n columns, right? First column, second column, third column, so on and so forth, nth column. So when we have something like this, we write as a subscript, we write it as 1 into n. This represents the number of rows and this represents the number of columns. Some of you who have studied matrices in your 11th grade or 12th grade will easily understand this notation, right? So typically what I write is, I write A 1 cross N. As soon as I see this, I know that my vector A actually has one row and N columns, right? When a vector has only one row, it's called a row vector. Similarly, for a column vector, suppose if I have a vector B, suppose if I have a vector B, and if I have components b1, b2, so on, so forth, b, n, right? Now it has n rows, first row, second row, so on, so forth, n rows, but it has only one column. So I'll represent this as n cross 1, where n represents the number of rows again, and 1 represents the number of columns. So if I write a vector, like a column, I can write, give, given a vector, right, given an array, I can write it either, either as a row vector or a column vector, right? We'll see how these are useful. I, I'll just I'm just explaining some notation here and how to how to so if somebody gives says b n cross one, I immediately understand that this is a column vector because it has n rows and only one column. Right? Again, just extending this idea, matrices are typically represented as a m cross n. So if I have a matrix here with n m rows, one, two, so on and so forth, m rows, and if I have n columns, one, two, three, so on and so forth, n columns. This is called a matrix of, of size m cross n. We can think of matrices as double array, as a uh, as basically a, uh, an array of arrays, right? Double array of arrays. For those of you uh, uh, who are from computer science background, those of you who are from other backgrounds, you might have come across what a matrix is uh, in your high school or even in your undergrad first year. It's a very very simple and straightforward concept. So what you represent here as a subscript basically tells you how many rows and how many columns exist.